Hey guys, Master Coex here, and I'm here to talk to you about Dragon Ball Super. Again. So episode 26 just dropped, and uh, yeah, the animation debate is still open on that one. Dragon Ball Super may be flawed, and it suffers from drastic errors and quirks that are just off-putting for most fans, but you know what? There is actually a surprising amount of flexibility that is left in the show, and it could actually save it and make it into a completely satisfying package for fans old and new. Now, quick disclaimer before we go on, I don't know anything about the main plot, as in the Shampoo arc onwards, because that's whole new material that's not been explored in any other shape or form recently, bar the series official manga. So instead, I'm gonna look at seven points that could actually make Dragon Ball Super a more worthwhile product in the end. Now before we begin, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, be sure to at least watch the episode or at least watch an episode summary somewhere, so just before we begin. Number one, give another character a win, a convincing win. Now I remember all the furore about Resurrection F when that came out and well, it was thinking, oh Vegeta can take the win, it could be the ultimate revenge for the Saiyan race against Frieza, he could actually take the win. And actually in the movie it was explored a little bit, but ultimately Goku took the win. It just hurt the overall product and it was just like, Oh, the ending was so poor. I love Goku as a character, he's my favourite. But even this kind of makes me think, wow, the characters, apart from him, really don't factor at all. I mean, there's no point for them even being there. Now I get Toriyama's idea that Goku had to win was deep-rooted in the Buu Saga and the Buu Manga, because originally Dragon Ball Z was meant to end at the end of the Cell Saga with Gohan taking on the mantle as the world's strongest hero. But due to popularity, the Buu Saga was written, and then Goku took the win. It's been embedded in Toriyama's mind that the fans want Goku to win. Uh, newsflash, no we don't. Let Vegeta win. Let Piccolo stand on his own and not get beaten up. Don't let Gohan be suddenly become completely useless. More on that later. Goku doesn't have to die or be beaten up to within an inch of his life, and not just give it to him because he feels guilty or doesn't want to be selfish. It has to be a genuine feeling that I can't win. Maybe this person can, like he did with Gohan in the Cell Saga. We need more of that. Anyway, two, give the other characters more stuff to do. Resurrection F was great with this because it gave Tien, Roshi, Piccolo, Krillin, and Gohan a really good fight. And it was a really awesome looking one too. It gave them stuff to do in the movie. And okay, somewhat, true in the series, but it didn't look as cool. Now, I appreciate that Piccolo and Majin Buu are lined up as part of Universe 7's champion team to go against Shampa and his team in the upcoming arc. That's cool. It means that Piccolo is relevant again and Majin Buu is actually given something to do instead of just sitting there and eating stuff and being Mr. Satan's kind of living chum. And also, I don't mind the fifth slot being taken by someone else who isn't a Z-Warrior. He has a place in the canon now because he is the only other warrior that Beerus had a trouble fighting. And to have him in the actual plot now, that's actually pretty cool. That's a nice touch. I actually like that. And even if the other Z-Warriors aren't really doing anything on the front line anymore, they should be given something to do, something to take up their time. Krillin, for example, he's a cop and he's using his powers for good. That's great. That's a really nice touch, and it's something good because he has strong moral values. Something that was explored in the Dragon Ball Online game, Tien establishes a brand new crane school that he was part of in the Dragon Ball series. That's cool! That'd be great to have put into the actual series. And okay, this doesn't happen for another like 30, 40 years or so, but maybe at this point he could be saying, Oh, I found this guy. He seemed pretty strong. I want to train him up. And this could be the catalyst that gives Tien new purpose in the show. And Roshi, well, uh... He just keeps being Roshi. And the answer, well, uh, baseball commentary? And this brings me on to number three. Gohan's much needed revival. Gohan is irrelevant as a fighter. Simple as that. He is not strong enough to be able to put on a convincing fight. We're going from a character who was the strongest fighter in the universe at one point, with his ultimate form being bestowed upon him, being able to take down Super Buu, potentially, and save the day, to be barely able to hold Super Saiyan Level 1 in the space of, what, like, 18 months? 
That's really striking. It's just confusing how he could lose all that power in such a short time. He was able to hold on to his full power Super Saiyan for three weeks during the Cell Saga, and okay, that was at the height of his training. But being able to be acclimatized to that power and not being able to take any energy whatsoever. He should be able to hold Super Saiyan level 1 without any difficulty. In this, he's barely able to hold it for about maybe a couple of minutes. And okay, he's not training to be a fighter anymore. He's a father and a scholar. His character is a scholar. He doesn't want to fight. But in the world he lives in, he has to realize that fighting is part of... part of it. He has to accept that. This whole arc is maybe part of something quite great. Maybe he's reached that point where he's not strong enough and he realizes this and he actually gets scared. It's like, oh my god, what happens if there's another force that attacks the earth and I'm not able to protect my family? What am I going to do? Also, he doesn't have to worry about shaming his family. In fact, I think Mr. Satan would be quite proud that his son-in-law was a fighter and a scholar, multi-talented. That'd be pretty awesome. It'd be great that he'd have a character arc which would mean that he'd regain his ultimate form. Maybe he could be training with Piccolo, because Piccolo seems to be just hanging around his house all the time, and Piccolo seems to have been training all this time as well. So, why not? Why not just have him come in and just train with Gohan after some studying time? It's not like Gohan isn't smart. He's probably one of the smartest people on the planet, so I think he can afford to do some training for a couple of hours a day. Number four, better animation, or at least more consistent animation. Now, animation takes money, time, and skill. A lot of skill. That seems to be something that Toei's failed to grasp. And it's really starting to give them a lot of pain. Especially online. Toei doesn't seem to understand the GCQ triangle, or the creative triangle. As in, there are three points to any kind of creative project. There is good, cheap, quick. Ultimately, for any creative project, you can only achieve two of them. If they want animation that's cheap and quick, it's not going to be good. If they want good and quick animation, it's not going to be cheap. An average anime episode costs about between 100,000 and 300,000 US dollars to produce. So far, we're already at 26 episodes, so that's millions of dollars being put into animation. Dragon Ball isn't exactly a niche product. It's worldwide. It has a lot of merchandise, it has a lot of syndication, it has a lot of DVD and Blu-ray and VHS releases. You can make a lot of money. And especially the movies, they made over $100 million US all over the world. They have the money to produce this and not make a loss. Hire their most senior staff. Hire the best quality control people. Start it earlier! They may put that budget towards fixing it in the home release, but as far as I'm concerned, they're just cheaping out on the TV animation now so they can get it out quick and cheap, and then just quietly tidy up the animation when they have the time, and then put it on home release, and then market it, saying, oh, it's gonna be better in the home release, and then eventually they can go like, oh yeah, we can get profit in guaranteed sales. Yeah. That just strikes as a lack of confidence in its own product. It knows it's not going to be stellar in terms of storytelling, so it has to cheap out at the point of production on TV, and then maybe change it just in case if anybody notices. If they don't notice, so they're okay, they can just leave it. Really, I would just settle for decent animation. It just has to suit the style. It has to just work with Toriyama's format and then complement it. That's all it has to do. Number five, more filler like comedy, please. Episodes one, two, and 14 prove to me how funny their filler can be. All those things peppered about the actual story arcs, so the actual canon, that was actually kind of scary, that the filler is better quality and funnier than the actual main plot. Can we just have some more of that type of madcap slapstick comedy put into the actual arcs going on from now? Please? Six. More peril and tension. There's just no tension. Flat out. There is just no tension. Quite honestly, we, we know what's gonna happen. These first two arcs, we've just thought, okay, when's that gonna happen? When are we gonna get to that point? Okay, okay, that slightly changed, but oh no, it's gonna ultimately change like that. Oh, there, 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 there is. I've already seen that four times in the movie. We're just waiting for new content. And this is supposed to be new content. And we've had to wait seven months for this. Seven months. Not to mention there's just no peril or global destruction or pain or misery and sorrow like we saw in the history of Trunks and the Cell Saga and the Boo Saga. 
I mean, mass genocide? That was like, whoa. Okay, at least on Earth. I mean, Beerus has destroyed many planets up to this point in his arc, then, you know, that's lots of lives lost, but I felt disconnected. I didn't really feel like a, a sense of attachment or like pain or empathy. I didn't feel that. I felt just like away from all that. The first two arcs have also been really self-contained. They've either been taking place on a huge yacht or on a cliff face somewhere. And I know that Dragon Ball usually takes place in wastelands and stuff, but there's usually some collateral damage in a city before that. We're just left thinking, when is Goku going to press the win button? And this brings me on to my seventh point, which is, please explain Super Saiyan Blue. I mean it. Please explain. How did Goku and Vegeta learn Super Saiyan Blue? How? Now, okay, it may be too late to do it properly, like all these other epic transformations that we've seen, like Gohan going Super Saiyan 2 for the first time, Goku going Super Saiyan for the first time, and then Super Saiyan 3. I mean, that was just like, whoa. We need to at least find a point when they discovered this new power. A sense of frustration, or tapping into it purely by chance, or at least just like a better exposition via a flashback. How Vegeta get those powers? Did he become Super Saiyan God? Did he just learn it from Goku? Or did he become Super Saiyan Blue first? I mean, we just don't know. These questions are just left unanswered and probably will be left unanswered. We probably will never know. And that's really sad. So with that, that just about sums up my thoughts on how Dragon Ball Super can be made better with just seven simple tweaks. Did you agree with me? If so, leave a comment. If you didn't agree with me, also leave a comment. Don't forget to like the video and share and subscribe. And also just check me out on Twitter for any more updates. Anyway, thanks for listening to me rattle on about Super again. And until next time, guys, catch you later.